Yes, we can. Please go ahead, Mr. Thompson. Thank you. Um, uh, I prepared um, a comment on the uh, study that we're discussing uh, that was submitted uh, early August, uh, and I don't propose to go over that in uh, uh, detail because it stands for itself. But I'll, I'll touch on a number of points briefly. <clears throat> um, in summary, I concluded that the draft study was both misleading and incomplete. And uh, I'm sad to hear that the NRC staff continues uh, to make misleading statements, uh, which they did um, in the opening presentations for this uh, meeting today. Uh, I wish the staff would stop pretending that they have um, examined a low-density fuel storage case in the pool. They have not, and they should be uh, forthright and honest about what they have and have not done. Now, another point I make in my commentary is that the staff has constructed a superstructure of analysis, including regulatory analysis, based upon a very uh, weak foundation of basic understanding of the phenomena of a pool fire. The potential for pool fire has been uh, known since at least 1979, so the NRC has had a period of 34 years during which it could have established a thorough understanding of the phenomena of a pool fire. Uh, it has not done so, despite many calls for this from public interest groups, state and local governments. It's essential to establish a solid uh, science-based understanding before considering uh, the event sequences that could uh, cause water loss or presence of debris, uh, only by um, acquiring a, a really thorough understanding of the uh, events that could lead to a uh, pool fire uh, can one establish the intellectual base to be certain that uh, you, you've, uh, uh, you can then look at events that might uh, lead to that uh, outcome. Now, uh, early on, people uh, thought about pool fires and said, gee, the decay heat is very low, how can this be a problem? But as soon as you look at this problem, you realize that uh, the nature of a high-density closed form rack is such that heat transfer is very feeble, especially when there's flow blockage from residual water or debris. And therefore, you need a very careful analysis backed up by experiment to determine whether your um, hottest or highest um, decay heat fuel can reach the ignition point. Uh, you need further very careful analysis to see how that fire uh, propagates within the first effective assembly and to other assemblies. Uh, this, this work has simply never been done properly. Uh, in this instance, the staff has taken the Melcor code, which was written for other purposes, and has adapted it uh, without providing our explanation of how they've done this adaptation or what uh, experimental validation they have for it. Uh, the staff has admitted in its own report that the Melco code uses a very crude process of modeling radiating heat transfer, uh, which we know is a, a crucial phenomena in determining the heat up of, of uh, fuel, uh, particularly in the event of flow blockage. The staff also concedes that Melcor has no capability to examine uh, clad ballooning uh, or rupture uh, phenomena which can affect fuel heat up and uh, ignition. So my recommendation 
is that this study be scrapped completely and that the uh, NRC go back to basics, start with a clean slate and develop a really solid uh, understanding of the phenomena of plumping a pool fire. I've laid out in my comments of August 5th uh, briefly how that could be done. And in doing so, the staff would need to address, uh, uh, among other issues, those raised by the ACRS in a letter to the uh, NRC chair uh, of April 13th, uh, 2000. And a number of uh, significant uh, phenomena were identified in that uh, letter report pertaining to the phenomena of pool fires. Uh, I'll touch on them briefly. Firstly, with high burn up fuel, that can be a presence of zirconium hydrides that uh, could lead to spontaneous uh, combustion of ignition in air. Spontaneous combustion of zirconium cladding in air, excuse me. Uh, secondly, zirconium air reaction can occur even if oxygen is depleted via exothermic uh, zirconium nitrogen reactions. And uh, associated particularly with the uh, hydride uh, issue uh, is the point that ignition temperature may be an inappropriate uh, criterion. And in fact, energy balance may be more appropriate criterion for determining whether a fire initiates. Uh, the, the letter also stated that um, the staff had neglected uh, exothermic reactions of aluminum and stainless steel. Uh, in the event that the uh, fire initiated, they said that the staff had neglected the potential release of small particles arising from decrepitation of fuel. And they further stated that uh, the MAX code was prone uh, uh, to using an excessively narrow plume and therefore could underestimate land contamination. So these issues um, have not been addressed in the current study um, and that I can see. Um, perhaps the staff will explain to me how they've been addressed. But um, if, if this problem were looked at in a really systematic science-based manner, uh, the scientific community more broadly um, could uh, examine all of these issues and uh, if done correctly, we'd uh, have a, a really solid understanding of the underlying phenomena. And then and only then, we uh, reach regulatory conclusions. Uh, and in, in the interim, um, I think it's uh, proven to, uh, to take a conservative position that these findings would uh, uh, lead to the um, identification of a substantial range of circumstances uh, wherein a pool fire could uh, occur. And just some closing points about the responsibilities of um, NRC in this matter. The NRC is the world's biggest regulator and therefore is looked to by regulators uh, in other nations. And I believe has a global responsibility to establish a thorough understanding of uh, the pool fire issue. And in illustration of the significance of this, uh, I have personally viewed a six PWR unit station in Asia uh, where the spent fuel pools are all above grade. Uh, I'm also aware of a, a large nuclear facility in a European country that is licensed to hold <coughs> in excess of 17,000 tons of spent PWR fuel in four high density spent fuel pools. Uh, configured so that the grade level is approximately mid-height of the fuel. And undoubtedly other uh, situations like this can be identified around the world. Uh, so I emphasize that NRC has a global responsibility to really come to grips with, with the 
phenomena of the profile. And finally, on the security uh, issue, uh, the United States government um, uh, reserves the right to conduct aerial strikes on countries around the world and has done so frequently. The NRC has chosen not to require air defense of U.S. nuclear power plants. Uh, if you put those actions together, uh, I believe it's the uh, NRC's duty to uh, accurately inform the United States public uh, of the um, phenomena um, associated with a spent fuel pool fire. Thank you, that's my commentary. Oh yeah, go on, click the subscribe button. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.